Hi everyone, good day, good day. Hi everyone, good day. Welcome, welcome. This is Kenton. It's Sunday again, and if it's Sunday, it is easy swimming pool answers. It is your day. It's the day whereby we get to come together and share in the broadcast. A day whereby we get to have fun, all right? Whereby we can discuss everything swimming pools. And today's program is going to be one of a difference because today we have a very special guest. Yes. And to all my fans, it's St. Lucia. Hope you're having a wonderful um, Creole day. Hope you didn't have too much to eat. <laughs> I know you guys like the salt fish and the breadfruit and the acros and these things and the avocados. Um, although, although we are confined to our homes, the internet, we're not confined. We can be worldwide wherever we are. So I want to welcome you especially um, to this Sunday's broadcast. So it is, it is now your time to invite a friend, share the link. Um, we are on Facebook, we are on YouTube, we are on LinkedIn. And you don't want to miss this program if you are a builder, if you're a contractor, if your husband is, if your brother is. You need to go and wake him up. You need to go and pull him and tell him, Hey, today we are discussing a very important subject, concrete and waterproofing. And so today, I want to tell you about our guest today. Our guest is Vito Mariano. And he started in the construction industry at the age of 14. Um, he worked with his father, a stonemason from Italy. Working seven days a week, he learned a strong work ethic. Vito has been in the construction industry for over 42 years, developing synthetic polymer-based concrete mixers. By 1995, he had eight patterns. Vito has worked on over 80 thousand pools around the world and thousands of concrete restoration projects. Wow. As an industry leader, the construction trade seeks his expertise and uses Vito's products wherever they use concrete and waterproofing. Vito has advised and provided his projects, his products to job sites worldwide such as Disney, yes, European theme parks and water parks, U.S. presidents, Trump Towers, international airports, Estu Lauder, yes, international film stars and entertainers, internet media moguls, the Fountain Blur in Miami, nuclear substations, deep earth mining up to depths of 2,500 feet. So he has done a lot and more. Vito is president of Basecrete Technologies. Basecrete has an international footprint where Vito continues his passion for the industry and his commitment to excellence. Vito offers technical advice and support to his customers, and I can attest to that. He is a member of many industry organizations such as Genesis 3. Before we meet Vito, we are going to view a short video on Basecrete and then you will meet today's special guest. Here we go. Basecrete represents an evolutionary leap in concrete waterproofing technology. With its patented blend of polymers and specialized content, Basecrete is unparalleled in bond strength, flexibility, and ease of application. Moisture problems are inherent to all concrete structures, costing hundreds of millions of dollars per year to repair. The natural movement of concrete, whether by wind, Thermal expansion or vibration leads to cracks and erosion, water penetration, and structural failure. 
base creed can be applied as part of your construction project to ensure a reliable moisture barrier and bonding substrate. Or it can be used as a patch or micro topper to repair and prevent erosion to any concrete surface. With an impact strength of 19 pounds, compressive strength of 7,050 PSI, tensile strength of 732 PSI, and flexural strength of 2,380 PSI, Basecrete does what no other concrete can. Apply it with a squeegee, roller, spray, or trowel. Basecrete can be applied as thick as you need in two inch increments. Basecrete is the market's premier cementous waterproofing membrane and bond coat, a unique all-in-one product that combines PSI, shear bond, tensile strength, adhesion, and flexibility. Log on or call today to discuss your project with one of our waterproofing specialists. All right, all right, all right. Good day, folks. Uh, we are back once more yet again, folks. We're back yet again, folks. Um, hope, hope that you're all fine and you're all well. So today, I want to welcome Mr. Vito Mariano to the program. Welcome, Vito. Welcome. Thank you, Kenton, and everybody in St. Lucia. Oh, Pleasure. yes. Pleasure. Yes, yes. It's so, it's so glad to have you here on today, Vito. Um, oh, it's great. Thank you. I mean, from your, from your bio, you have done a lot. Um, you uh, have, and I <laughs> go ahead, Vito, go ahead. Oh no, we still do. We're still, uh, I mean, we're in eight different time zones worldwide. So we're always working. We're always busy, but we still have a passion for it, which is good. Amen. I know that because, yeah. um, every time I meet you or I speak with you, I can hear the passion coming through in your voice. So I know you enjoy your, your industry and you enjoy talking about concrete and waterproofing and Here's a man who loves what he does. Um, so tell us ab about Vito. Who is Vito? We hear your vibe by about who, what are you like um, apart from concrete? Tell us something about yeah, you. You know, I'm, I'm, your tip I'm a typical family man. I like to have fun. I love to entertain. I'm Italian, so I love to cook. Okay. I love to have friends come over. My house is built to entertain people. And I can never get enough people. I, have, I love people. I, I, they come over and I feed them. <laughs> yeah. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. So, so today, um, we want to talk about um, waterproofing, um, and of course, of course, you have some wonderful products. Um, Basecrete uh, is a product we have used at at royalty pools, and 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 we can attest to its quality. We can attest to its durability. Um, what 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 was the birth of, of, of Biscuit? What was the birth of, of Biscuit? How did it come about, Biscuit? Well, it's all starts well in, in the beginning of time when I was a young kid. Uh, my father always said, "You have to learn a trade." Uh, old school, a uh, European, uh, got a scholarship. My whole thing was to go to school and, and, and study music. Right. And my father said, first you learn a trade, <laughs> then you go to school music." Right. So my, my dad's theory, uh, find a way to feed your family. You got to use your back and your hands and go to work. So that's what I did. Uh, I studied uh, seven years under apprenticeship under my father. And then uh, at night, I would go to night school and learn everything about concrete. Oh, wow. So I would go to school at night and learn. I had this dream about building bridges when I was about 16, 17 years old. And I never got an opportunity to build bridges, but I learned how to fix them which was good enough for me. Yeah. So during that process, uh, I was developing products, experimenting with a, uh, a gentleman who was, a, 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 who was an engineer. I worked with him for a couple of years. I learned an awful lot from him with concrete compositions and polymers, and cold polymers, monomers. And then I started developing my own product. And then I had my first patent back in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and it's still used worldwide. Okay. Yeah. That's so good. it's been That's busy. Good. Yeah, my, you know, and we enjoy it. I still, you know, when I'm stressed, I go into my lab and I start mixing concrete <laughs> with a glass of wine. <laughs> so you, so you really take this thing to heart, man. You really, um, you have really made the world a safer place, um, a more durable place, and um, one that um, contractors worldwide because when I look at your list, and I'm sure this is this is just a, a, a drop in the bucket. Of, of um, what you have done. Um, I mean, before we came on, we were talking about some of, some of the projects you have done. I mean, these are world-class projects. 
and um, and you're still doing more. Um, before we go, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, we're still doing more, and there's a lot of con- there's a lot of uh, projects that we work on that we're not permitted to talk about. Okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, um, if- we have to sign NDAs and non-disclosures Pushers. for very powerful, very famous people. We can't discuss it. All right. But when when, when we hang up, we can discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe, 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 maybe you can tell us what are what are maybe one of your biggest projects. Uh, why that, this, that, the that, nuclear you, plants. that you can talk about. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, nuclear, uh, I've done nuclear plants. One of the personal uh, projects that I'll never forget because I was so scared was going down 3,500 feet into a mine shaft. Mm. Yeah, wow. that was uh, very scary, uh, but they made me feel comfortable. I was there for uh, 14 hours teaching, training, wow. uh, escape routes. So they had to build escape routes. Okay. And they had the waterproof because every every 200 feet going below uh-huh. has a mechanical room with about a million dollars worth of equipment. Wow. So if there was ever a major shutdown, those mechanical rooms have to be protected and waterproofed. Oh, wow. So oh. there is an electrical uh, failure and then everything shuts down and then the men are stuck down there. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, big projects. I've, you've, uh, you know, Disney, for instance, has uh, 27 inside engineers, very demanding, have to work with them. Water parks such as Volcano Bay zoos all over the world uh i'm building a new moat marine the 350 million dollar facility in in florida uh actually i was at a gala last night uh, fundraising with them that is going to be they're building 80 swimming pools all olympic sized pools what 80 olympic sized pools yeah yeah okay that yeah. that's so, that's big yeah <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I, I sit on the board. I'm one of their consultants, their waterproofing consultants. Okay. And it's all going to be ba- it's all going to be base creep. Wow. Well, well, I'm yeah. glad to hear that. So, folks. Yeah. It's- he- here you go. Here you go. You. This is a, a, ma- a massive project, and it's all base creep. So that that just uh, that just underscores the value of this product, and and the and the durability. And the quality of the product that um, it's been trusted to do so many projects um, around the world. Um, you you spoke about about the mine shaft, um, literally saving lives. Um, your your product is literally literally involved in saving lives, waterproofing. Yeah. So so it's it's, it's fantastic. Um, I know you you have a, you have a short PowerPoint presentation. Um, we can we can go to that and let me just welcome everyone who has joined the program. Um, <laughs> we are going to have a, be having a PowerPoint presentation. Um, after that, we can take your questions and then we can see how, how it rolls. So, V two at this time, are, are you ready for the PowerPoint presentation? I sure am. Thank All you. All right, excellent, wonderful. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so the, my approach to uh, construction is to minimize um, a lot of confusion because what we do is actually quite simple. Um, you know, learning a trade is important. You don't have to work three, four, five years to, to an apprenticeship. We can go through it pretty quickly. Um, so my whole my whole theory of working on all these swimming pools, for instance, we do decks, balconies, parking lots. Uh, this one is more about the pool decks, even though. We can waterproof concrete roofs, all, especially all over the Caribbean, cisterns for water containment. And um, I've actually surpassed 80,000 pools five years ago. And then if you can go to the next one, Kenton. Okay, so uh, what, what's very important is concrete surface profile, uh, which is a, a CSP, uh, which means concrete surface profile. Uh, if you have a smooth surface, uh, for instance, glass, um, that's a zero. Uh, the alligator skin, which is really rough, is a 10. We need to be between 8 and 10. So the surface has to be very rough if you're going to plaster it. Uh, it could be down to 4 or 5 if you're going to thin set and put tiles over top of it. Um, if you're going to trowel it, uh, you know, 4 or 5 is ideal for non-slip and, you know, we have to create a good key for plaster to stick to. Uh, that's why we want it as rough as possible. So concrete surface profile is very important. Again, glass is at a zero. Alligator uh, back uh, is about a 10. 
we want to be eight to ten, which is ideal. Go ahead, Ken. So the different types of application, uh, it's the different substrates, like I just mentioned. Uh, smooth is okay. You can trial base crate smooth uh, to about a one, and then um, you can make it as rough as you can. It depends what you want to do to it. If you're going to be like this gentleman here is squeegeeing it and they're back rolling it with a roller for a non-slip surface uh, that you can drive on or, or walk. There you go. Next. Okay, so uh, substrates. Uh, Basecrete um, has a colloidal silicate, uh, which is uh, what we call uh, uh, liquid, gla uh, liquid glass. So what happens is if you were to take a cubic inch of concrete and you expand it, so it's a cubic foot of a sponge, you can see all the millions of little holes. The colloidal silicate penetrates the concrete and then fills in all those capillaries. The little capillaries are the little tiny spaces that you can barely see. Uh, the liquid turns into a stone and it completely shuts off uh, mortar. I mean, uh, uh, any moisture, vapor going through it. Uh, it, it, it's breathable, which is very important. We really recommend that for concrete that is weak because you're going to add about 40% of the strength. So if the concrete's 2,200 roughly PSI, you're going to bring it up to about 3,500 PSI. We highly recommend a colloidal silicate when you're doing tiles. For instance, the whole pool, if it's tiled, the whole pool. If it's the uh, tile liner, uh, uh, one foot down, uh, that's a, a very good area for you to spray out with the colloidal silicate. Uh, temperature surface is important. Uh, when you're working on a surface that's very, very hot, such as it is in Arizona, Florida, California, the islands, uh, the temperature, you don't have to worry about freezing. So you don't want to go over 120 surface uh, area. The other part that's uh, very important is SSD, surface saturation. You want to always make sure that you dampen the concrete with water, no standing water or ponding water, but damp, and then you do your first application of base creep. Providing that the surface has to be clean. If it's not, if it's a job site that's been sitting there for a long time, power wash, it's the best way to do it. Uh, concrete. If I'm talking too fast, it's just the way I am. It's because I have about 20 espressos every day. Uh, the substrate moisture is important. Always has to be SSD. Slightly damp surface is very important. And then, uh, go ahead, Ken, you can move forward. Now, uh, the other thing is it's important that, to look out for, concrete, when it goes for a 28-day cure, when concrete's first poured or sprayed, your alkalinity, the pH levels can be very high. It's going to be 12, 11 to 13. After 14, 15 days, it goes down to about, about 11. After 28 days, you're down to about 7, 8, 9, 10 which is a good range for, for, uh, for the alkalinity to be adjusted. The pH is lowered automatically by concrete that's already cured. The other thing is uh, very important is to your surface uh, details. For, for instance, shrinkage cratch, uh, uh, cracks have to be detailed properly. And then you want to make sure there's no uh, rebar that's uh, rusting and coming through the concrete. And if there is, we have details out there and specs that show you how to do proper detailing so it doesn't happen. A lot of times that the, uh, uh, the uh, pools are poured, the, the, the steel comes up to the surface. Uh, instead of three, four inches into the middle of the concrete, they come up to the surface. And that's when you have a little bleeding and, and rust that comes through. So uh, there is a, you know, we can send everybody specifications that show how to do proper detailing, how to get rid of the cracks and how to fix them. And the same with the steel. That's it. We're good, Ken. Okay, so uh, one of the things that's very important for waterproofing for me is to protect the steel. So what happens in the, in the construction industry is once the concrete is absorbing water, which it does by, by nature, always does, rain, uh, thermal, moisture in the air, uh, what happens is you get efflorescence. So the second the concrete starts to get wet, it starts to leach out efflorescence. So for instance, in a swimming pool, uh, you spent all this money 
and then you put on a beautiful surface such as plaster um, or uh, or tile it gets all the, the efflorescence in order to get the the uh, to eliminate that waterproofing is, is the key that's so important the pools aren't like they used to be 25 30 years ago they're just typical pools inexpensively built today they're pretty they're pretty advanced so i think it, Doing, I sit on the American Tile Association, so that is uh, the PT602 standard, which is uh, a regulation that we all follow, and it's pretty well worldwide now. Uh, the other part of that whole thing is uh, is delamination too. If you oversaturate something, you're going to get delamination. But with basecrete, um, because it's so adhesive and and flexible, we still maintain an average of 6,500 psi. Um, it's so adhesive, it will stick to metal. It's that good. Go ahead, Ken. Okay, so do's and don'ts. Temperature, uh, surface not to exceed 120 degrees. Um, what happens is the material flashes. It just absorbs so much moisture out of the material. It, 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 it over accelerates the drying time, which you're going to have a little bit of, could have an issue with it. Uh, always, I always tell everybody, work in the shade all day because nobody really wants to work in, work in the hot weather, especially on a hot surface. Uh, so it's really good. Rain and snow, um, you don't have to worry about it. And if it does, then you do have to worry because ain't, I don't think it's ever snowed in St. Lucia before. Uh, time of curing, yeah, very important. So if you have a surface, you want to slightly dampen. You want to put your first coat of base creed on it. You want to let it has to cure 24 hours before you put on the second coat. In the second coat, you do not water the surface. So you don't put water back on the base creek. You just apply base creek right over top of the dry base creek and you're good to go. If you're troweling the pool or tiling the pool, you want to be able, you can do it in one, if, uh, one coat of one eighth of an inch. So one eighth of an inch is the minimum requirement for waterproofing. That's very, very important. Uh, workmanship is not going to, you know, it's, it doesn't take rocket science to do it. You can roll it with a three quarter inch heavy nap roller. And we have videos everywhere. We can always supply videos and instructions on how to, how to apply it. So the best thing to do is just slow down, take your time and do it right. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. So maybe to Surface saturation, uh, SSD, we talked about that. Slightly damp, not to, to exceed, so it's ponding or standing water. Uh, always make sure that you know what the weather forecast is. You want to make sure that it doesn't rain within six hours of your applying the, the material. So if you finished applying it at 10 o'clock, you want to make sure that by 4 o'clock it's not raining. And if it does, just be prepared to cover it and uh, make sure that the rain doesn't go near it because it will dilute the finish before it's cured. Uh, mixing instructions are very important. Every, every five gallon container that ends up on a job site has the mixing instructions at the back of the uh, uh, pail. So when you do your mixing, you wanna mix it homogenous so there's no lumps. You wanna sit back for about three minutes after you mix it the first time, go back and, and mix it the second time. And the reason why is you wanna be able to have the material blossom. You want to be able to have the material have an extended pot life. So when you when you mix it the second time, you have an extended another 10, 15 minutes in the pot life for working with the material. And then, of course, when you're applying it, you want to have the right tools. They're not expensive. Typical trowel, typical uh, roller that's three-quarter inch heavy nap roller. You can go down to half inch, quarter inch if you're doing squeegee and you're back rolling so you can have a non-slip surface. But inside a swimming pool that's going to be plastered, you have to use a three quarter inch heavy nap roller. And then the substrate is always important to know what kind of surface you're working with. If it's dirty, it should be cleaned. It never has to be acid washed unless it has a lot of contaminants. And then um, you do not have to wait for the surface to be dry. You, you wanna make sure it's wet before you do your first application. There you go, Ken. All right, Pinzo. Thank you very much <coughs> and for it's that. fast, but there's a lot of information. There's a lot of information. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, 
I mean, but it's not difficult. It's not that. It's it's not difficult. Well, well, um, well. I mean, no, because for us, for us over here, we 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 typically use um, more plaster on pools, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and and I think I, I think maybe maybe they want to give us go over again the whole issue of the of of, of the plaster. Um, how do we? Um, what precautions? When it comes to the plaster, should we, should, should, should we look at before we apply the whatever okay. diabetes or, or, or whatever you? Yeah. So the most important thing, by the way, I have three patents in pool plaster. Really? I, I know. I know plaster very well. <laughs> okay. Um, I used to manufacture too. Okay. <laughs> so the important the important thing of, uh, of of the surface is to make sure that your alkalinity is somewhat level wait 15 to 30 days for the concrete to cure you're going to neutralize the alkalinity the ph automatically on the concrete which is important because it flashes too fast when you put material on it uh, so after that you want to make sure the surface is clean and you want to make sure it's saturated with water but no standing or ponding water okay if i if i can st stop you there you were saying after you have um <coughs> cast the pool with concrete um, what's the what's the minimum time you wait before you apply plaster? Ten ten days. Well, say you have your shell, mm -hmm. the shell's cured. You put your your base creed on, right? If you're going to use base creed, it's just the bond coat. You only need one coat. Okay. Right. If you go, if two coats will absolutely waterproof the pool. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that the first coat is applied. 24 hours you come back, you don't wet base creed. You want to make sure you put the wet base creed rolled on to dry base creed. And then after that, another 24 hours before you plaster. Minimum. Okay. 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 And then the, the other thing that's important too is before they plaster, is just make sure that the, the, some water is applied to the surface of base creed. Just like you would spraying down the shelf concrete. All right. Right. Because right. what happens with plaster, plaster <clears throat> it has an average of 2,800 PSI. It's not that strong. You can't leave past plaster uh, an extended period of time out in the, in the weather because it likes to crack, as we all know. You want to keep it hydrated. It's important to keep it wet. Right. So when you, when you apply water to the surface of base creep, you have some water droplets that are going to be hanging on to the roughness of the base creep. When you mm -hmm. apply the any all plaster any plaster to the surface what happens is it slows down the curing time so it keeps it hydrated on the on the on the on the inside and then you want to be able to keep it hydrated on the outside because i can guarantee you if you plaster a pool on monday and you don't go back and put any water on it on tuesday or wednesday there's going to be a little bit of problem with the mm. plaster it's going to hydrate yeah okay and if it's a large pool we recommend you just put a sprinkler system on them so there's water always being uh, uh, applied to the plaster while it's while the pool's filling up and it's curing. Okay, okay. Um, now, now let me let me just. I mean, we have folks on YouTube, um, and and if you have any questions, um, you can feel free to put it in the chat. Um, if you cannot, you can always send to me via WhatsApp. My number is there, four eight four two zero two two. And and we can ask Vito your questions. Um, I know, I, I know. Sometimes we have, we have pools that um, has cracks, cracks in there. Um, and and how do you address? I mean, not not major cracks. Well, major and minor cracks. How do you go about? What are, what are some of the tips we can follow to uh, address okay. those? Yeah. If the if it's an in ground pool, yes, right? most times, um, and it's not suspended, a lot of our pools that we do is are suspended, in the condos and hotels and that. Uh, if it's a structural crack, then there is you have to detail the concrete. You got to dig out. You got to hammer out the concrete. You got to get to the steel, put the steel back in again, and then you can do your concrete repair. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the concrete repair is basically after you put the steel back into the concrete is to put base grade inside it with a mesh system that we have. It's very inexpensive. And we do the same thing with uh, fissures, hydration cracks in concrete. So base grade has a natural flexibility that will cover uh, 
of 0 0.06, which is the thickness of the credit card. So your typical hydration crack in a, on a concrete swimming pool, if it's not structured, which most of them are not, they're just shrinkage cracks. Right. We're going to bridge. We're going to bridge over top of that. And if you don't feel secure with it, if it's a little bit bigger, then we have a four-inch mesh with base grid. It's embedded. We have specifications how to do it. It's very simple. Right. Because what happens is those cracks always want to move. Because once concrete's cracked or hydrated, it's always going to be there. Right. Okay. So, so with the mesh system, it's an anti-fracture mesh. Mm -hmm. uh, the concrete and everything floats on top of it. The base grid floats on top of the crack, so it doesn't migrate through the, through the plaster. Okay. okay. So if you have a if you have a structural crack in in the concrete, uh, it's going to show up in the plaster. Right. And if it's suspended above ground, then there's different ways of taking care of that, and that is to in inject it with polyurea. That's a wholly different thing. <laughs> but okay. we we do that we do that a lot. There's a lot of pools out there um, okay. that are old and that have a lot of movement that are structurally cracked. Okay. And we fix them. Yeah. Of course. And of course, and of course, base grid isn't limited to just pools. I mean, I mean, over here, <coughs> I know right now, um, depending on where you are, I mean, I mean, we have hurricanes coming through um, every year, and some folks may want to have concrete roofs um, rather than you know galvanized roof. Um, what advice do you give to folks who want to have concrete roof? Is it important to waterproof those roofs? What do you advise? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, in the concrete roofs, you have the concrete that is suspended over the top of the building. It's going to have steel in it for structure. Uh, you want to be able to always have that steel protected so water doesn't get to it. Right. Um, you know, concrete has very little flexibility to it. The base grid does. So we have elongation of 33%, which is important. Okay. You know, it, it, it's going to bridge the cracks. So, but you're right. We don't just do swimming pools. I mean, I'm doing a job right now. It's coming up in New York City, 600,000 square foot parking deck. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. We have a question um, from, 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 from a customer. And um, he's saying to you, um, question, can you use this product on an exposed concrete deck to avoid water penetration? Yes. We do it all the time. Uh, decks uh, that could be on ground or suspended over top of living space. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So what happens too, a lot of, especially around where there's a seaside, there's ocean water, mm -hmm. the concrete tends to degrade because the salt air gets into it. The steel starts to expand and it starts to spall. Mm -hmm. And I see it every time I drive underneath a bridge. It's everywhere. Okay. Okay. But okay. the question, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can use it in, um, on, on the decks. All right. Um, let me see if, if you have if you have any more questions coming through. Remember, we are we are also on Facebook, um, on the Right Boots International, and you can also get us there as well. Um, so you have concrete um, roofs, you have you have you have um, you have swimming pools. Um, what about well? Of course, we 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 are very much uh, an island, and and all and all around us is water. And um and and most and most prime properties are actually on the um next next to the ocean, um or, or, or to the sea. Um, how can base create assist um in those applications? Well, um, it's part of the testing that we do. If you know you know what muriatic acid is, correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, take take big base create next time you you see it somewhere, Kenton. Yes. After it's cured, just pour it straight out of the gallon, muriatic acid on top of concrete. It does not touch it wow. at all. Doesn't deteriorate it, doesn't eat through it, doesn't touch it. Wow. Uh, so salt is the same thing. It's acidic. It's sodium chloride. Uh, perfect conditions. And we do like in places like in Cuba. Uh, Richard Branson is a perfect example. Uh, we did, we've done all of our... You know, owner of Virgin Records. We've done all of his swimming pools twice. The second time he got, um, unfortunately, the hurricane destroyed his island and yes. took everything away. He rebuilt it. We that's we did everything again. Uh, salt, acids, uh, acidic, 
Uh, we've done plants where they uh, squeeze lemons to produce lemon juice. Uh, <laughs> after two, three years, the concrete is absolutely destroyed. There's nothing left of the concrete. So it's all base created, it's waterproofed. And other than the fact that it's not for waterproofing, Ken, it's the fact that you can't deteriorate it with, with, with acids. And also, and, and also, as as you're on, on that point of the, of the factory, when they're making juice, um, how safe it is to use in your systems for um, drinking? Because so, some folks, when they build the houses, they build <coughs> they build in ground systems um, to store water. Um, can this product go in those systems? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So um, part of our, part of our secret is our material is manufactured; it's all food grade. Wow. So we're ANSI 61 approved for potable water. Um, and we're so scrutinized. For instance, we're doing the $350 million Moat Marine in Florida, which is the world's most recognized marine biology uh, laboratory. The marine life is more sensitive to hard water and impurities in water than humans are. Okay. We have to make sure that it's completely potable water so for instance in cisterns um, yes you can um, have the water uh, the other good thing is RO water uh, for reverse osmosis which is a very uh, highly uh, deteriorating method what it does to concrete it, RO, RO water destroys concrete mm -hmm. we're also impervious to that so it doesn't touch us wow. wow yeah and I would definitely use uh, base grade material inside cisterns for potable water Okay, so yeah. so to me, to me, to me, your, to me, your your product covers um, a whole range from 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 food grid to marine life. I um, mean, does everything. Um, what about applications? Um, you spoke about it in in the presentation. In terms of um, f for us in the islands, um, what is probably more best for us? To, to apply it, a roller or a squeegee or what, or char on? Well, it depends on the size of the job. If you have a deck, for instance, you have a parking lot, <clears throat> you know, 2,000 square feet, 10,000 square, 50,000 square feet, is to take squeegees that have rakes on them, like measure out an eighth of an inch, if you're doing an eighth of an inch, and mm -hmm. then you back roll it with, and you put cleats on your shoes, like, like golf shoes, and you walk on and you back roll it. Okay. Which is really good, and it's very fast. There's also machines out there if you want to do 10, 20, 30,000 square feet. There's machines out there. They're $25,000. Graco machines. Uh, they just spray out the material. It looks like, a, uh, looks like a, an orange peel. Okay. That's fast for very large jobs. For a swimming pool, three-quarter inch heavy nap roller, it's fast. It's very efficient. Uh, if you're doing a pool deck... You could just trowel it down, pull, and then you take a broom and you broom it. It looks like a sidewalk finish. So okay. it's very versatile. There's so many things you can do with it. Okay. Now, now I know there's something about uh, when you roll it on, you you, you do vertical and horizontal. Is is that still applied, or is there a different method? Yeah, and what's important on that is because concrete has its little ways the way you shoot it. So the little the little the little capillaries, little holes. You want to make sure if you don't cover them on the first time you cover them on the second time so if you didn't cover them going vertical you want to go horizontal or crisscross okay uh, you want to make sure if you don't catch them on the first time you 99.999 percent you catch them on the second time <laughs> what well, we call the second pass okay all right yeah. all right all right i can i can see somebody is um, typing a question so let it come true so so you <coughs> so you have application um by roller or, or, or squeegee um, but or trawlers or, or hopper gun. You can use a hopper gun too. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. Now, because because we are always hot down here, um, do you advise us to 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 do it when it's cooler, to, to apply it when it's cooler in the evening or or what time of the day? Well, it's always a, it's always good to start early in the morning. It's first of all, it's healthier to work. You don't get burnt out. Uh, you don't want to start at two o'clock when the sun's above your head, <laughs> right? Uh, but in Arizona, where it hits 120 degrees, it's very hot. It's very dry. No air that's moving. It's just hot and dry. Right. You know, they just and we do a lot of work in Arizona. They just start wow. early in the morning and they work. They work with the shade. Oh, 
And usually, <laughs> usually by usually by two thirty they're done, you know. Okay. And, but they start early in the morning. All but right. you know, you, you get you get in Saint Lucia can get pretty hot. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, the the sun, but 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 all this stuff for the sun is 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 I'm is I'm getting crazy hot. So well, we do work in the desert in Saudi Arabia. That's hot. Wow, <laughs> that's really hot. Yeah. That's How do you hot. dress for that? <laughs> uh, you don't. You you work naked. It's just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. You wear you wear. You wear a sheet. It's just, it's just cool. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So I know you have. Okay, um, we have another question here. It says, um, it says customers are complaining. Well, I don't. It says customers are complaining on the cost of waterproofing products in concrete. Is it advisable to use base creed as an as an alternative? Yes, uh, you're looking at a dollar twenty a square foot for the material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I, not that expensive. Yeah. I guess. I guess the question is. Um, I know. I know there are some things you can add prior to uh, mixing, or or this comes after mixing. I suppose. Um, I don't know. I I don't know if 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 you can speak to that. Um, yes, I I I I got the point he's making. Like like products where. You actually add to the uh, concrete truck. What, yes. what's your, uh, what, what do you recommend? Well, here's the thing, and that's a very good question. So they have uh, integrated material that you can put at the plant. Uh, the, they're colloidal silicates. Yes. Like Zype, Zypex is probably the most popular out there. Yes. Okay. Um, they're integrated to percentage inside the concrete mix. They help. They help. What I consider they help, but not enough. Because what happens is if the concrete cracks, um, you have a crack. Mm -hmm. So if you have a hydration, it's, it's cracked. So you've lost your waterproofing capability. Ah. So, but it's important. But that, that's what we consider as a primary waterproofing. Primary, okay. Right. So you want to be able to go with a secondary primer on okay. top of that. Okay. What's more important to me is that that, by the time you end up integrating concrete with Zypex is not ex it's not on the low end it's pretty expensive we have a colloidal silicate that you can spray on the concrete such as the base creek yes. plus as you know or yes. the inter in our intercept uh it's inexpensive mm -hmm. one guy can do an average of 20 by 40 pool in an hour and a half okay uh, that does the same thing as what the integrated Zypex delivery uh concrete comes on your job site this is sprayed on the surface. The important thing about that is uh, when you shoot your concrete or pour it, within the first three days, it should be sprayed with colloidal silicate. And that's and the reason it. why. Okay. Yeah, and the reason why is because as the concrete's still wet, it's drying from the inside, so it's pulling the material deeper, which is the waterproofing. So crystalline, which is colloidal silicate, the industry calls it crystalline, mm -hmm. it's a liquid stone that it basically fills in those spaces that the eye can see mm -hmm. and what the eye could see and can see, and it hardens, it turns into liquid glass. Okay, all right. So, wa so water can't transmit through it. It's like spraying your window outside with your garden hose. It just repels. Okay, so yeah. so therefore, so, so therefore um, I'm, I'm hearing you saying that um, after you have poured your concrete, within within the first three days, to spray on the um, silicate. Yes. All right. It's the best results. Best right. result. And now, yeah. So, and, and the other thing, too, is if you have an old pool or old concrete Kenton mm -hmm. that's old and it's degraded and there's a lot of salt from the salt air and whatever has penetrated the concrete, mm -hmm. the colloidal silica will densify the material. It will mm -hmm. push out the impurities. Mm -hmm. So, if you have concrete that's 2,500 psi, and it's absorbed a lot of impurities like, like sodium, salt. Mm -hmm. What happens is it's going to go into the concrete. You come back the next day, you can have a lot of film of white powder on top of the concrete. It's going to actually remove it. And then you power wash it off. You're going to add about 30, 40% strength to the concrete. And you're going to waterproof it. Oh, oh wow. A lot oh, wow. of benefits to it. Yeah, it works great. And okay. it's been around since the 50s. It's just really become really popular in the last 10 years. Okay. Good, good. Um, question again, it says, 
does calcium level does calcium level hardness um, affect the product? I guess does calcium hardness um, level affect the product? Uh, the calcium level it, it does. So calcium is 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 also lime. Um, it, what happens is you want to be able to remove it and adjust it. The colloidal silica will actually do that, removes and adjusts the, the calcium level. Oh, okay. Or even if it's uh, high pH in alkalinity is also can be adjusted. But that, right. that's kind of a natural curing process for concrete. That's really why they want you to wait 28 days for concrete to cure. Right. <laughs> yeah. So the, cal the calcium hardness in the concrete eventually is going to come out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, now, 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 that point you made is because I know typically some folks don't wait 28 days after they pour the concrete. They just pour the concrete, um, uh, 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 some, so, some this pass, then they come and they apply it in bright and bond coat. But there, yeah. but there isn't a, what, what, what is the danger in doing that? Um, it's the high, it's the pH level of the concrete. So what happens is most of the delaminations, for instance, you just, you just poured a concrete wall, right? You mm -hmm. just poured concrete. You come in the next day and you put thin set on it and you put tiles or you put plaster on it. I'm 99% sure it's going to not bond. It's going to delaminate because the pH level is way too high. pH is, a, it, it's going to burn it. So you won't be able to get that adhesion. Uh, if you do spray on colloidal silicate, you can take it from 28 days down to 14. Oh, okay. 12, 12, 14 days. You always want to wait. And, and I see it all the time. Everybody wants to push. They want to push. They want to push. And then, oh, what do we do now? They call the plaster all delaminated. Uh, it's the plasterer's fault. No. Mm. In most mm. cases, it's not. Okay. You, know? you want to make sure. So material has to go through. It's like you, know, you just painted your wall in your, in, in your living with paint. You don't want to put your hand on it right away. You want to wait till you know. You, know, you want to lean up against it the next day. It's got to go through a curing process. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, so that that's that's so. Therefore, therefore, it sounds to me that um, that um, I mean, and I'm so glad to the you're on because um, we can we can we can now bypass some of the additives in the concrete, right? And just yes. and just use the, the the silicate, and then and then we come with with base crete. Now, when you use the, the silicate, do you apply one coat of base crete or two coats of base crete at, at that point? That's always good. If you're using it as a bond coat to put plaster on, just for bonding, you're gonna have waterproofing capability uh, about eighty percent. Okay. If you want true waterproofing, then you want to do two coats on top of the colloidal silicate. Mm -hmm. That's going to give you the best waterproofing vessel you have. Okay. Okay. So most of our clients, they follow the TP602, which is the standard by the American Tile Association. Right. Is to apply the colloidal silicate uh -huh. and then apply your base grade two coats. Okay. So, so do you, are, you from, are you familiar with Ray Corral from Mosaicist? No, I'm not. Uh, so I work with the most famous world's probably three of the most famous world. They do unbelievable work with tiles. That's they follow that method, which is ideal for them. Works perfect. Okay. So so yeah. so so today, what I'm what, what I'm hearing is 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 you you, you advise to silicate then two coats of, of a bond coat and you're pretty much set, set to go. Yeah, and I'll tell you, and the reason why is because <clears throat> concrete's concrete. So you know that's the structure of the pool, and then you put on all this. It's like a beautiful woman putting on beautiful makeup. <laughs> right you can have it sounds like a cliche i have to word this, i have to word this properly your wife is hearing you <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna retract from saying it. Okay, okay so you buy you buy a rolls royce for three hundred thousand, and you give it a thousand dollar paint job my lord <laughs> same Come thing on. yeah so, yeah. I'd be really careful how he said that. So. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And my wife hears me too, so I just. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, you want to, yeah, you you want to protect that beauty, right? You spend yeah. all that beautiful, all that money, you the cosmetic part of your swimming pool is what you're looking at all the time. That's true. You never see the concrete behind it, never. No. no. And if you do, there's a big problem, you know. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> so if you're looking at if you're looking at the beauty of it, you want the cosmetics, the tiles, and the plaster and everything else around it. You want to keep it longevity. There's nothing worse than having it. All the tiles have the fluorescence on it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for our for our for our um, um, maybe 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 you want to define what it is in in a more local in in a more non-jargon term for those of us who are new into concrete. What what exactly is that? Uh, what the cosmetic part of it? No, no, no. The effer, uh, the effer, efflorescence. Okay. Yes. Efflorescence. Efflorescence. And I have a hard time saying it too. <laughs> Effor, efflorescence is water that dries. Mm -hmm. It turns into white. For instance, like a cave. If you walk into a cave that's been leaking water for years, you have these stalagmites. Mm -hmm. That yeah. water buildup of calcium yes right and it just eventually you end up with these stalagmites that's what efflorescence is it just builds up builds up builds up okay it tarnishes the look and it's basically a white powder that turns hard yeah so it's coming out of the concrete and water does that um no matter where there's water you're going to get calcium buildup right 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 yeah. right and if it cracks you're going to get more calcium buildup on top of the crack, and that's usually where they're visual, visual. Even with the towel grout, you get a lot of the efflorescence coming out of it. That's yeah. because water's penetrating it. Okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I, I see. It, and sometimes you, you, you go to a pool, you you, you see a a, a, hair, a hairline crack, and there's some yeah. white stuff coming out of that. And like, what's that? You know, that's the, yeah. That's, that's, that's calcium. What... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Calcium, lime. It's the uh, sodium. It's all part of the same chemistry. All right, but yeah. but but you're saying if we use if we allow the curing time, um, we we apply a silicate, we apply a base grit, um, we can guarantee we can minimize those effects from happening to the pool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Beautiful. some of my some of my clients mm -hmm. that we work with, we just did a, a home, five thousand square feet of glass tile in Beverly Hills. Wow. Um, one of the world's richest people. Mm -hmm. And uh, his big thing with the engineer was he wants to have that tile not look like the pool he did 30 years ago. And he couldn't get that out of his head that he spent all that time and money building this beautiful pool. This was in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Um, and it was full of calcium. He couldn't, re couldn't reduce it. Wow. So he, uh, he, he did his research. He hired an aquatic engineer. Um, and we, that was a few years ago. So happy. Yeah. It's important. You know, you don't, you know, you have, like I said, you buy a $300,000 Rolls Royce and if you don't do it properly, you're going to end up having rust come through it. All right. Um, question here again. Um, Wilson asks, if your concrete is 6,000 PSI, what would be the strength after two, two, um, two um, I guess, course of, of, of base grit? Um the concrete is not going to change psi what you can do is put a flexible waterproofing membrane on top of that mm -hmm. so the membrane will be 6500 psi on top of 6000 psi but the concrete has is completely rigid any movement it cracks there's very little flexibility in 10 12 14 inches of concrete where base crete at one eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch is going to have 30 33 percent elongation and, that, and, 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 and I think um, we, are, we are winding down. I, I think that's, that's a point I, I want to get clear. Because base grit is very flexible from what I've read. And, yeah, and, I was in and, the video there. Yeah. Yes, very flexible. Um, we are very much, I mean, I mean, part of the island in the north um, is very prone to tremors. And, and, mm. that's where, and, and that's where you have more swimming pools in, in the north of the island. And the, and the middle tremors... And I, I, because I'm there, I see all the time. I see pools cracked and, and, and leaking. Um, I mean, in I, I mean, you can't really stop tremors because that's 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 beyond your control. Um, yeah. Can can basically assist in any way at all with this? Yes. With, with the movements. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this goes back to the last question. Yes. So concrete is very rigid. The earthquake is going to crack it, guaranteed. If as long as it doesn't crack. 
at 0 0.06, which is your average crack, base grade is going to basically float on top of this concrete shell. Mm -hmm. So it won't it won't migrate through the base grade because the base grade is like elastic. It's going to stretch over that crack. Mm -hmm. Right. If the pool cracks more than 0 0.06, more than a credit card, then you're going to compromise the whole system. But over the years, I have figured out that 99% of the pools do crack below 1.06. It's mm. a hairline. Okay. Yeah. And that's usually what happens with an earthquake because that steel, it's hard to separate that steel. It takes an awful lot for it to crack open because it's combined together. It's monolithic. Right. Yeah, because California, we do a lot of pools in California, which is uh, prone to an awful lot of uh, earthquakes. Okay. Okay, so you, so you, and um, of of course, of course, um, oh, someone someone asked me this week, um, well, last week, <laughs> if your pool is tiled already, can you go with, with biscuit, or you must take out the if tile? The, no, if the tiles are intact, mm -hmm. we will stick to it, and then yes, we can go over top of it. If How the thick? tiles are in, in place. Uh, I would spray it because it's hard to trowel it. You cannot roll it over tile. You just want to spray it. You want to spray it on with a hopper to get some texture. Right. Right? And then depends what you want to do after that. Mm. So the tile, if the tile's intact, the tile's actually your substrate. Okay. Because as we all know, there's tiles that are just almost impossible to remove off a shell. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you can apply it over tiles which, which are intact. And that's the keyword, yes, intact. Yes, that are intact, yes. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, um, um, I know folks are on listening, and um, especially on YouTube. Um, if there are no more questions, um, I guess, I guess um, we can um, round up. Um, so I know that there's not really a, a delay between us and the, and the audience. Um, so, so they're probably hearing this in the next few seconds. Um, you know, any delay that, that's I'm coming through. But um, I, I think today I've learned so much and um, I have uh, um, come to appreciate more base grit and, uh, and the value and the power that, that, that it, uh, that it um, affords any builder, any contractor, any homeowner who wants, who wants to get the um, job done. So let me, let me thank um, our viewers and most of all, Vito, let me thank you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll probably give the folks one more, um, maybe half a second between our delay to ask any questions you have before we close off today. Because I, I, know, I know you have to go on a um, trick-or-treat. <laughs> oh, I can hear my dog barking. They're at the front door. My wife's taking care of them. Okay. They're eating all my chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. So, so um, for me, the highlights today has been um, one that, let me see, I think, I think, I think, I think we have answered his questions. He gave a thumbs up, so that means he was happy with the, with the question. <laughs> um, two thumbs yes, up. Yes, yes. So, um, folks, Basecrete is a product to use from now on. And um, to the person who asks about the, um, the additives, here you go. You can you can apply the biscuit sil silicate um, after three days of, of pouring the concrete or within three days of, of pouring the concrete and then you can apply two coats of, of biscuit. And of course there's a white, um, a light and a dark grey colour as well. And a black, yes. And a black. So there are four colours. Yes. Okay, great, yeah, great. Is, so, so a lot of the founds and planters are done with, with the black and the white. A lot of the gutters, they just use it as a finish without tiling it or putting plaster on it. All right, all right. Yeah, what? looks really looks good. Good, good. Because I, a matter of fact, a matter of fact, now, what if, what if, what if, um, because I have, because I have a client, and his trough is leaking and it's all tiled, I can I can see the the water coming through the trough at the bottom. I can mm. see the calcium at the at the back. Now. If I don't have a hopper <laughs> to spray it on, what do I do? Brush. You brush. Brush. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just, just slap it on as thick as you can get it. It's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Good. 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 All right. Well, Vito, let me let me thank you so much for coming on. 
And um, of course, folks who are who are on here on YouTube and Facebook, um, if you have any questions, I have always found Vito and uh, Vito once once he's available, he would answer. Um, he would he answers his phone. He would ask for photos, <laughs> so take photos, and um, he's also willing to assist um, anyone who 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 wants a, who has an issue. And they need BaseCrit. I think I think from now on, everyone should be using BaseCrit alone. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> on your <laughs> roof, in your pool, on your but on your decks, on your sea walls, um, any product that has to has to be waterproof, BaseCrit is the way to go, and it is the thing to be used. So Vito, let me give you some. Let me give you um, your last part of the words. Um, you want to tell Saint Lucia. Um, go ahead. Well, uh, you, you know, I'm a little uh, jealous. Not living in St. Lucia, it is a beautiful place. Uh, beautiful people, such as yourself, Ken. We've met a few a few times. Yes. Um, beautiful people, really. I'm looking forward to this uh, pandemic to disappear, so I can come and visit your beautiful island. Yes. 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 <laughs> and uh, thank you for the invite, Ken. It was a pleasure. All right, all right. Someone and I'm said, always, uh, and we're always available. Always available. That is true. That that is true. You, yeah. You're always you're always a call away. Um, yeah. Um, well, I know. Okay, I know. I know that this this person had 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 a burning question. Let me see if he was to ask it. <coughs> let, let me let me give it because I know I know he has some problems. With a with a with a with a pull he was doing. So why is why is you here? Maybe maybe you can give him some relief uh, <laughs> with um with the big screen. Um, but 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 apparently he says um the fact that you can use it over tiles. Thanks for that. So because though he's happy that it can go over tiles. Of course the tile must be intact. All right. Um. If the tiles, oh, and there's one other thing, um, and it was in the PowerPoint. Sometimes I go to a pool and I'm seeing rust stains, rust stains all over. Rust is, is rust. What's going on, and how can we um, help that? Last thing for me. Okay, so you know the steel comes out to the surface. Yes. You know if the steel's placed where it's supposed to be placed, it's not going to rust. The surface, the closer it gets to the surface, the more water gets into the steel. So the steel starts to rust, it starts to bleed, and it starts to show through the tile, through the grout, or through the plaster. Yes. If it's if it's an inch in, uh, it's just you can. You, I would. It, it doesn't penetrate through the base creek because the base creek is going to put a film of polymer on top of it. Right. So it won't penetrate it because it's waterproof. Right. Um, and leave it intact. If it's too close to the surface and it's showing, then the proper way of detailing is to remove it, mm -hmm. uh, re-steal it in that area, put some anti-rust on it, mm -hmm. and then base creed and mesh. That's okay. it. Very simple. And if you need the details on that, we also have that, that we could send anybody. All such right. Such as yourself. Yeah. Good, good, good. All right. So um, for those builders who are on, Vito, um, they're saying that they, that they really appreciate um, the what your, your your time today, so I know the is is a, is valid is valid time, and I'm pretty sure um, you will be getting some some um, reports and calls to solve issues with this screen. So once again, let, folks, let me thank you for 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 being for being on today, and and if it's Sunday, if it's Sunday at five o'clock, you can catch us on the live, and that's where we are. We're here to answer your questions solve your problems and provide solution for everyone in the swimming pool industry because we're all about swimming pools that's that's our job that's our passion we want to help you to help your customers and clients to be at ease so you can be at ease and we all could continue to do what we like to do best that is building pools and solving problems so, so Vito thank you once again and see you guys Next Sunday, God's willing, as we get ready to um, for another episode of, of our program. So until then, all the best to you. We are out. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, St. Lucia. Have, happy Sunday.
Thank you.